Thanks for coming out to this, guys. Graduate students, everybody grad students here? Yeah. Woo-wee! Okay, you know what, I, I think I have jokes that are funny, but I'm just gonna say some stuff that I'm not sure is funny up front. You guys are all in college, so I assume, I assume you know what gentrification is. I don't have to like define it to you, you know what I'm saying? And you all had a couple classes about it, you know what I mean? It's happening a lot. I live in DC now, and it's happening a lot. But eventually, it won't be happening anymore, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, what goes up must come down. And I just hope I'm still alive. I just hope I'm alive to see all these gentrified neighborhoods become hood again. You know what I'm saying? Like 2060, just a bunch of rowdy little kids on hoverboards. <laughs> loitering in front of a Whole Foods. Are you guys ready for ghetto Whole Foods? <laughs> Can I get a price check on quinoa? I like a price check on quinoa, please. Not to be confused with my name, which is also quinoa. <laughs> quinoa Watkins, at your service. College, man, I should have fucking went to college, man. I'm glad I'm here hanging out with you guys now, but I missed out on that. I, my guidance counselor just sucked in high school. That's why that didn't happen. I was like, paperwork? Ill. I thought I just got to go and meet hot babes like A.C. Slater and them did. You know what I'm saying? I did a show the other day. Uh, there's a bunch of high school kids there. It was uh, a senior class trip. The school was from Michigan, and they were visiting Bethesda. Yeah, thanks. Some people got that joke. And I was like, what am I going to say to these kids? And I was like, fuck it, just tell them the truth, man. Just tell them the damn truth. And the truth is, you should just do all your worksheets, every single one, and go straight to college. Don't wait. And go. And not for, like, knowledge. You know why you need to go to college? Because the possibility of you getting a job where you can show up late, like, infinitely increases. That's why. You go to college? You don't even have to graduate in some situation. I'm not trying to take Maryland's money. If any of you guys want to leave, stay. I'm just saying, you don't have to go to college for two years. You could get a job where you could show up at 1048 every morning. And then for the first hour of the day, you get to look at cats wearing sunglasses. And then your boss will look at the cats with you. Try to pull that shit at Applebee's. <laughs> Show up late two days in a row to Applebee's and then look at your phone? Hell no. You're done. Nobody here worked at Applebee's. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine with me, you know? This is, we, we got Bill Cosby coming later. That's why the chair's here. <laughs> Ramin. Ramin with the save. Very nice. Very nice. You guys ever um, watch television before? <laughs> Are you familiar? <laughs> you know what my favorite show is? Um, Law and Order, SVU. Hey, Rami, what time is it right now, by the way? I forgot, I'm supposed to be keeping in the time. It's 6.25. Let's say I've been up here about two and a half minutes. He give me a light in about five? Give me a little five minute or? Thanks, bro. Also, for the dudes, I will be giving you the light when you see a black dude in the back of the room holding up a cell phone, which could be easily identified in this situation. <laughs> that means you got about a minute left. Holler at your boy. <laughs> my, favorite, my favorite show is Law and Order um, Special Victims Unit. If you have the time, I do suggest that you go back on Netflix, start with the Law and Orders, like original shit, then 
get that project free TV, get those middle seasons, then you can get into SVU. But it's the best. One, because you get to see crime solved unlike reality. Then on top of that, it's never the black guy. The awe, what is the awe? I love, is it all black people getting exonerated? Aw, oh, man. <laughs> it is the best. It is the best. There's exceptions to the rule, but usually they accuse the black man and then they immediately call take backs. I don't know what it is legally, backsies. I don't know what they call it in court. I've seen it go down a little different. Like a couple times, it's the African guy with the kufi on and the dashiki, like maybe once or twice. One other time, it's ludicrous twice. They split it up. You can see it. You know that one. Ludo is such a dickhead. Like, what is <laughs> I love your raps, man. What are you doing killing children? Other than that, I've seen this scenario at least 17 times. Also, note to the comedians, it's very loud. So it sounds like you're on like drugs because the sound is bouncing back like. <laughs> okay, so here's what happens. The chick comes in the squad room and she's like, oh my God, I've been attacked. And they're like, who do you think it was? I think it was Tyrone from my job. He used to ask me what's good and I don't know what that means. I don't know what it means. Then they catch Tyrone's dumb ass before they even get to the clarinet solo in the credits. <laughs> and, then the, and then the captain, whoever is lead on this one is, putting the screws to him. Like, hey, let me guess what happened, Tyrone. You're out chilling with your dogs? Getting your swerve on? Huh? And then you did it. You did it, Tyrone. And Tyrone's crying, man. He's like, no, man, it wasn't me, man. There's no possible way it was me, man. I owe Sally May $7,000, man. It wasn't me, man. And then the captain comes in and he's like, hey, we gotta cut Tyrone loose. Turns out, it's another creepy white guy with glasses. <laughs> it's amazing. But I watch it all the time. And when I say all the time, I mean all the damn time. And it's starting to affect other areas of my life besides the couch, you dig? Like, I've become too accustomed to seeing excellent cop work. Okay, college cop, maybe you don't know. College, okay. Like, cops on TV are the best. Cops in the real world are not necessarily held <laughs> to the same standards. If you can see what I'm doing with my hand with, from your seat, you recognize that it's not in the same place as when the joke started, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> this next part doesn't usually work in a college crowd, but I'm gonna try it anyway, grad students. Uh, further evidence, uh, clap if you've been robbed before. Couple people in the back. Continue to clap your hands if you got your shit back. Exactly, exactly my point. Cops on TV, they're definitely getting you your shit back. Every time. Then on top of that, the shit will still work. Whatever it is, it's still gonna work. Then on top of that, they're gonna solve a cold case from 50 years ago with a thumbprint off your Palm Pilot or your Razor scooter. I don't know, I wrote this joke in 1998, so I don't know. And this is, and that's a lot to see. That's a lot to see in marathon format every Tuesday. You know what I'm saying? 
Like, I'm not a criminal, but you know, when I go to the grocery store, I like to have a few grapes. <laughs> so what? That's my fee for me even walking into this damn Shoppers Foods. I could have went anywhere. There's nine grocery stores in town. You guys could come off a couple grapes. You don't have to put that on the books. One cherry, I hit the hot bar up. I want one chicken tender. I'm not weighing that. I'm not putting a fucking sticker on that. It's already ready to eat. I'm going to eat it. And then I'm paying for my cereal and I'm leaving. And the only reason you're getting the money for the cereal is because you can't walk around a grocery store and eat cereal. <laughs> that is insane. You've never seen that before. Could you imagine how appalled you'd be if you saw some weirdo eating grape nuts in the middle of Safeway, man? I'm calling the cops on that dude immediately. You know what I'm saying? If you see something, say something. They got the fucking pamphlets everywhere. All right, that was pretty good. That was all right. Don't clap yet. Wait. I got one more joke. I'm just trying to pretend to be a professional. I haven't met anybody on this show, and I don't want to fuck anybody's name up. I'm going to tell another joke as a buffer in between that. You guys, um, you guys have been on the internet before, right? That internet boy, let me tell you. I'm on it. And I hope you find me on it. I'm addicted to the whole thing, dude. Still using Netscape. <laughs> still got a Black Planet account, you know what I'm saying? I'm, the, I'm still, I'm the one keeping them in business. Lycos, go get it, you know what I'm saying? That's me, that's me. I asked Jeeves some shit like last night. I said, Jeeves, what's good? He's like, I, I don't know, man. I just hope if you find me, just do me the professional courtesy of not hijacking any of my statuses, okay? You know what I'm talking about, sister. You feel me. Here's an example of a hijacked status. Let's say I put up something like, hey, performing in the huff tonight, whoop de whoop And then uh, person A writes underneath that, oh, Jamel, that's so awesome. Then person B goes, hey, person A, how you been? <laughs> What's going on with you, player? Oh, person B, you know I'm chilling. Then these jerk-offs have a 48 notification conversation on your wall with your bandwidth, with your Wi-Fi's that you're either paying for or you're standing in front of Panera Bread, whatever. <laughs> then you come home, you finally check your shit because you don't got a real cell phone or nothing. You're like, ooh, <laughs> 48 noties, I'm the man. I'm the man now. And then you look at your profile, it turns out these niggas is going to Cancun without you. <laughs> you guys ready to start the show? Go ahead, clap your hands, man. Get into it. Get involved. Please put your hands together for Mr. Cool Cow Comedy himself, Ramin Mostafavi, everybody. Greet you anyway. Hi, that was fun. That was good. I got a, I got a great picture of you guys before the show that I am so gonna share once I have the ability to reach space. But this place is in a fucking like there's a steel plate on top. You can't get anything in here. You guys, uh, Matt, you were funny, man. You were very funny. You other guys were here too. That was great. Um, talking, it was good. How long you been doing stand up, bro? Yeah, it was funny, dude. Funny, handsome, good hair. You piece of shit. Uh, everybody else, anybody else tried stand up? Who's out here? Are you guys grads too or just students? You're grads also? Okay, so what did you like? What did you study when you were in school? The thing you oh, are a lot of you math? 
Okay, so math, you, you had a little bit of a, you had a pull, you had a draw, right? So you were like, like you were headlining the grad part, and then when you came up, there was a lot of clapping and stuff because you pulled yours. So where, what, was your, what was your grad the department? That you, mechanical engineering and all those guys uh, installing HVAC units or something and couldn't make it out? Okay, none, none for you, no friends for you. What was yours? What was, yeah, you. Yeah. Oh, you too? Oh, okay, two of you. And Qaddafi, what was your? Information management. Okay, good. Good, okay. There's not, what do you say about information management? I don't know. They could, you didn't give them the information that you were on a show. I don't know. You don't tell jokes like that. The stage is like eight feet in the air. Eight feet. How many, how many inches is that, you math fuckers? I don't know. Say, like, don't do the math. I'm just kidding. It's 96 inches. Shut up. All right. I know, I know. Good. It's good to be here. We're gonna have, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna tell some jokes. We're gonna have some fun. As long as you cre keep your arms crossed, I feel cozy as shit. Keep doing that. <laughs> Makes me feel warm. I like it. Yeah. So who's, who's, uh, let's see who else is here. You guys, this is all math. Anybody repping? Who's in the back? Let's play the back of the room. What's up in the back? What are you guys doing? Are you grads too? What do you, what do you, uh, you, ma'am, what do you study? What did you study? Communications. And that's also for grad. Uh -huh. And you too? Very good, very good. Thank you for being here. And, and you, sir? Systems engineering? These are really, uh, I'm sorry? Oh, you, you fucking, you threw your hand up because you're like, I'm exciting. All these other people are boring. <laughs> Astronomy? Very good, wow. Are you the only uh, astrologist in the building? <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, I don't care. Go ahead. <laughs> out dancing? Yeah. It's like 1.30 in the afternoon. What, uh, <laughs> you got some crazy ass friends yes. for an astrologist. <laughs> you're gonna go fucking crazy, aren't you? Yeah, you're gonna go crazy. Oh, that's good though. That's a great major. I uh, I was smart enough to I have a, I, I have a, a BA in uh, theater arts, so so that's pretty cool. You like to volunteer, yeah. <laughs> that's okay though. No, I like it. I like it. You are talkative um, with me. You didn't talk to anybody else. Do we have a thing? Do we have a bond? <laughs> maybe. Maybe it's a astrological connection. <laughs> That we have, yeah, cosmopolitan, maybe. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, I majored in the theater. I went to uh, George Mason University back there, and uh, no big deal, but my crew team crushed Maryland when I was back there. But, uh, it's not a big deal. We were inter intramural, so he crushed you. <laughs> I clearly don't have a lot to talk about. A 15-year-old crew record is what I'm bragging about. <laughs> in your faces, all right? No, I, uh, I, I did. I went to college there, man. I did. But I love, like, this is, Maryland, obviously, this is a good night, like, mixed trial. I personally, I was born in Iran. Any other Middle Easterners here? Middle East? Middle East? You right there? Where? 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 Sudan also? Oh, good, good, good. Okay, so, are we going to do it? Okay, okay. On my signal. On my signal. I uh, I love I love the mix the mixed crowd you know when you get to the middle of the country it's a little bit more uh, monotone you know and um but it's fun I actually uh, this is gonna I know some of you I guess your grad maybe a little older I have three kids and uh, and it, is that weird for anybody like I th on purpose like had them <laughs> knew they were coming had them let them come all the way through right. And, uh, and I like to expose them all in different cultures and stuff like that. I think it's important as a parent, you've got to teach kids about all the different kinds of people there are on the planet. You, know, you, you pigeonhole them. It doesn't even matter if you live in what we let's call it middle America or whatever. You can expose them in all kinds of different ways, different restaurants. Even the Internet you know, makes the place a smaller world. My son, he's eight years old. My oldest boy is eight. He was eating pancakes the other day with, uh, with his hands. And I stopped him. I'm like, Freddie, uh, you've got to use a fork and knife for that. And he's like, uh, Dad, he's eight. He goes, Dad, this is my way, my way of living. <laughs> we all have our own ways of life. It's like you're eight. So I got him a beer, right? Because that's fucking deep. You know, kid like that, I don't care. Fork and knife, out the window. What kind of beer does he want with that pancake? That's what I want to know now. 
But it's true, like he was right though, he's right. He should have his own way, not in my house. He used a fucking fork, don't get me wrong, but. Like you gotta take them out. Like I took, like uh, you know, I should show him. The, for example, that not everybody does use a fork and knife in this world. You know, I take him to an Ethiopian restaurant. Show him that there are people that do eat with their hands. Right? Two of my best friends, these two gay guys, they just adopted two kids. So I take them over there. Show them that there's other pathways to love, other ways to make families. You know, show them that some places in this world there are people that don't, uh, you know, uh, shower every day. There are people that don't have proper dental care, take care of their teeth. They don't. Uh, they don't pay attention much to like personal hygiene, so I take them to NASCAR events because you want to let them know that there's all kinds of people in this world. Guys, NASCAR is dumb. Do we need to talk about that? Nah, it's dumb. You guys know. All right. I, uh, I've been married for 10 years. One of you was married. Who said they were married? The fat one. Yeah. And uh, he said it. You all just looked at it. Uh, I've been married uh, 10 years. How long have you been married, bro? Two years. Yeah, that's good. That's a good. That's solid. Two years is solid, right? Is that past the, what's the, is it one year that everybody gets divorced? That's what it is? Okay, two years. Good. Good, good, good. You weren't in prison for like a year or anything, were you? <laughs> so you're still, you're solid. Good. Yeah, I got, uh, I got three little kids, and uh, they are great. I don't know, some of you don't know, uh, much, maybe you don't know much about kids, because obviously you don't have them maybe, but, uh, but they don't have any sense of time. I'll bring you into the family world a little bit, and then we're going we're gonna to get out a little bit more. Okay? So, and I should warn you, I do, I do a lot of like, uh, it's like satirical, racist, societal observations. So when you hear me telling jokes about different races and things, I'm, I'm kidding. We need to take the time to understand it's a comedy show, and I'm joking, even if you're a Jew. Because you <laughs> can't make exceptions. You can't make exceptions. <laughs> I'm just teasing. I'm teasing most of the time for, for all you know. Uh, yeah, so, so three kids. And uh, they, they have no sense of time. Kids don't. Maybe you're a teacher. You have maybe nieces and nephews. No sense of time. My, uh, one of my kids uh, said to me, uh, Dad, I want to have uh, mac and cheese. And I said, yeah, we just had mac and cheese yesterday. And he goes, Dad, I haven't had mac and cheese in eight years. <laughs> I'm like, kid, you're seven and a half. So unless your mother's vagina has some kind of food service in there that I'm unaware of, which I know there's not, right? <laughs> because, because I've eaten there. And uh, that's, that's the first pussy-eating joke of the day. That's the first one. I broke ground right there. Nobody else did it, I don't think. Matt, were you keeping score? You're so handsome, you shithead. Look at you. Nice shirt. So uh, the wife and I, she's a good cook, my wife. She cooks quite well, in fact. And, uh, but as a parent, every once in a while, you do want to have a little break. You want to have a little respite, a place that you can take the kids where you don't have to do the cooking and the cleaning and all that. So we used to take them to this place, Chick-fil-A, which I know you guys have out there in your food court, right? And I love Chick-fil-A. Best chicken sandwich in the world, bar none, best. Spicy chicken sandwich, waffle fries. That's mine, right? Hold, hold on, hold on. Because politically, I think a lot of us know I have issue with Chick-fil-A. Some of you know they outwardly fund, or did anyway, uh, anti-gay rights, anti-gay marriage. And I'm not cool with that. I'm not. You can make a choice in this country. You can choose to be ignorant and, 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 uh, and hate gay people if you want to, uh, sir. But you can't <laughs> tell people how to live. You can't. And I firmly believe that. But more so, uh, I believe in a spicy chicken sandwich with waffle fries. So, like, I'm conflicted by it. You know, I don't want to give them my money, but it's so good. <laughs> You guys, it's so good. It'd be like if the KKK came out with like a homemade chicken noodle soup, you know? I love chicken noodle soup, man. It's like a comfort food for me, you know? I could hear their ads. It'd be like, try the new KKK chicken noodle soup. We use premium chunks of white meat. And just like the United States of America, our soup is best when it's full of crackers. How good. funnier than that, guys. It's funnier. <laughs> Black guy clapped. We're good to go. We're good to go. We're good to go. All right. All right. <laughs> I, did, I, did, I did stop, though. I, I make jokes about the Chick-fil-A. I did stop going there. I haven't been to Chick-fil-A in three years, and it's a serious moment. We can remove ourselves. Uh, yeah, there's some fans already, but you shouldn't. You shouldn't. Find another way. That's, that's the point. Find another way. But it is delicious, you know. 
I started going to a place called Arby's, which I didn't notice in your food court, but uh, it's also good. It's got the good roast beef sandwich, you know. So I started going there. And the thing about Arby's is I think they're not just liberal. They might even be pro-gay, you guys. Here's why. Here's why. <laughs> what if I left it there? Arby's is gay. Next joke. Here we go. No. Three reasons. One, their logo. It's a 10-gallon hat, looks like an erect penis, and says Arby's across it, right? Fry selection, straight and curly. It's right on the menu. And they've got the gayest condiment in the history of fast food, horsey sauce. Who has had the horsey sauce? Guys, you can't even say horsey sauce and not sound gay. You'd be the toughest man in the world and roll in there and be like, I want a roast beef sandwich, large Coke fries, and some horsey sauce. Can I get some freaking horsey sauce in here? It's true. I love it. Have you had, have you had it? You guys, it's so good. I know. It's got that, it's that horseradish mayonnaise Little concoction things. It's got that sort of semeny after flavor, you know. Sometimes I like to rip open a package and squirt it all over my face. So good. Squirt the kids. It's amazing. It is tasty. It is tasty. Kids. I got one kid just sucks it down. I tell you. Oh man, I do. You guys are fun. We're gonna we're gonna be okay. We're gonna be okay. I was born in Iran. Not yet. Uh, that was just pointing at you. That wasn't it. That wasn't it. Um, and uh, there's a lot of stereotypes come along with that. That's why it's easy to make stupid little jokes about things blowing up and whatever else. Because the media brainwashes you, guys. I hope we're aware of that. The media is not here to inform you. It's here to scare you. That's their product. It's fear. You know? It's always rape, murder, fire. Just That's what they do to you. They brainwash us, right? When I was a kid, there was this movie called Not Without My Daughter. You've probably never seen it. Any older folks? <laughs> Nobody? You've seen it? Yeah. Matt, good research. See? Guys, Matt's head of the fucking class. Pay attention to this guy. All right. It's the only movie, for those of you who don't know, it's the only movie in the United States that depicted an Iranian man married to an American woman. This particular Iranian man was an asshole. He was suppressive and abusive. He essentially took his wife and daughter hostage and put them in a basement somewhere over in Iran. So because it was the only depiction of that lifestyle in America, everyone thought that's how Iranians would act in a relationship. Everybody. So I hate that movie viscerally, I swear to you, I hate it. My wife today, my American wife of nearly 10 years would say she hates it too if I allowed her to have her own opinions. <laughs> See, that's a joke too. I don't wanna perpetuate any Iranian or Islamic stereotypes. My, uh, my wives are very happy people. Um, See, I pluralized it, that's the, that's the joke right there. That's the joke part. My dad, he's the Iranian half of me. He's been in this country longer than he lived in Iran, and he still has a weird, funny accent, you know. Speaks English pretty good, but I think, like, stereotypically, like a lot of foreigners, he still curses pretty funny. He'll come out with things like, how the shit are you? How the shit are you? And you're like, ah, shit, fine, I don't know. But my favorite ever, this guy called our house, and he was sexually harassing my sister on the phone. And my dad is a very proud Middle Eastern man, you know, nobody fucks with his family, you know, and he, he's like, he's got like three buttons down and fur all over the place like foreigners do, you know. Guy harassing my sister on the phone and my dad gets on there, he's like, listen here, you son of the bitch. I fuck your ass. And you're like, what? <laughs> I'm pretty sure, guys, that he meant I'll fuck your ass up. <laughs> but what if he didn't, right? What if one of the repercussions for harassing my sister is my dad comes over and annually rapes you. That's a bad day for you. That's not the re intended result, right? It's my dad coming to get you, boy. <laughs> He's a good dude, man. My mom, she's cool, too. She's actually, I'm actually half Iranian. I, I'm American and I'm Iranian, but normally I just say that I'm Iranian because after you say that, nobody gives a shit what else you are. Like, saying that you're American and you're Iranian is like saying that you volunteered an after-school program to teach children how to read and you're a pedophile. You know, nobody... Nobody's ever like, but he's such a good tutor, though, right? He don't care. And my mom, she, of course, she speaks the English much better than my dad. And uh, I don't know if you guys know, like, this past winter, remember this past winter? It lasted 15 months. I don't know if you're aware of that. It was a 15-month winter, and uh, it snowed. I live out in Fredericksburg, Virginia now. And now, I'm sorry, I should have said that's why it smells like domestic animals in here. But my mom, uh, when it snowed, it snowed. You remember it snowed? It was like yesterday was, uh, was winter, right? And it snowed, and I got on the Facebook, and I made this status update. Dumb dick joke. I said, I've got seven inches out here. Also, it's snowing. Okay? <laughs> my buddy's got it. My buddy's got on there making little comments about Jack Frost nipping at my balls and stuff like that. And then my mom gets on there like 10 hours later, and she's like, 
we don't have much out here. I hope your kids are having fun playing with what you've got. I'm like, what the hell? Why? So I try to help her out, right? I'm like, Ma, we're not talking about snow. <laughs> talking about dicks. She's like, I thought so, but you said that thing about seven inches, so I figured it couldn't be you. So. So, if you, if, you, if you ever need a reason to send your mom a dick pic, that's it. That's the one. Oh, yeah, several angles, different lighting. In her face. In her face. That's what I did. Posted it on her wall, too. That's what I did. Showed her. <laughs> that's what we did. That's what we did. Let's see. That was Tundra, too, wasn't it? Was that the first, was that the first short dick joke? Are you keeping tally? I did the first pussy eating. I'm keeping it clean, guys. That's what I do. Was that the first? Whew, God dang, this is great. All right, so that's, uh, that's my mom, right? My mom and dad. When you're, like, when you're a stereotype that people can see, you try not to be it out there all the time. I'm purposefully looking at brown people. I see it happening right now. You do, though. You try not to be it. Even if you're, it doesn't matter what you are, tall, short, blonde, Jewish, Christian, black, white, we all have stereotypes. But you try, if you're one that people can just see, you try not to be it out there all the time. This is a little bit silly. But like, for example, black people try not to eat watermelon in public, or like Asians try not to wear cameras around their necks, or like Mexicans try not to murder people with machetes. You know what I mean? <laughs> As an Iranian the other day, I was doing this thing where I was like, man, this has got to be a red flag, right? I was talking to a friend of mine, and, uh, and he told me that only 2% of the United States is Jewish. 2%. Seems like a very low number, doesn't it, mathematicians? Very low number for the United States. A very powerful entity, just 2%. So I got out the old smartphone, right? So I Google searched it, because you don't have to wonder anymore. You just get to know things immediately. So I did. I got on there, and he's right. 2% of the United States is Jewish. Our conversation continued. Started talking about the import and export of oils, and he said diesel's the answer. Well, again, I don't know anything about diesel, so I jump on the phone, and I'm like, what's the cost of a 55-gallon drum of diesel? Can we refine it here in the United States? Then I realized, as an Iranian, I probably shouldn't be doing a Google search of percentage of Jews in the United States. <laughs> Followed by the cost of a 55-gallon drum of diesel. It's got to be a red flag, right? Somewhere in Langley, right? It would be worse. I'd do like a Google Maps search of like synagogues in a 10-mile radius, and I'd be in jail. I'd be in jail. That's how that works. You go to jail after that. Guys, Ja, how am I doing? I got time, right? Ja, right on. Okay, good. Okay, guys, here's where we're going to get serious, right? I'm going to talk about uh, football. And politics, and then, and then we'll close with a healthy masturbation joke. Is that a good schedule? <laughs> Is that good for you? Okay. Okay. Ooh, I forgot. I'm in Maryland. Ooh, let's see. Yeah. Anybody here from Baltimore? You from Baltimore? You guys are gross. Baltimore's disgusting. Because, <laughs> no, no, sit, not like you, not, but like you should sit further that way. <laughs> like you have contagious things on your lips and stuff. You guys are disgusting. And the other thing about you, not you personally, but no, yeah, you personally. Uh, you guys like dirty humor. You know that club Magoobies? You familiar with Magoobies up in Timonium? Anyway, it's a great club. And, uh, but the crowds there love dirty, this is such a tangent, love dirty humor. Love it. Like, as a comic, you go there, and you're like, man, is my set list dirty enough, right? So here's an example of a joke I'll do, like, uh, right here. I do it. It's not a great joke or anything. Just an example of a joke, and that'll show you how I twist it slightly for the demographic in Baltimore. Okay? goes like this. Behind a lady at a red light, I notice there's a sign that says, no turn on red when pedestrians are present. I notice there's a man coming across the crosswalk in a wheelchair, and I honk at that lady. She cranes her neck out the window and says, hey, there's a man! In the crosswalk. And I said, yeah, but he's in a wheelchair. And the sign says, no turn on red when pedestrians are present. So by definition, he's fair game. <laughs> she and I got to laughing, getting to know each other. She thought it was kind of a funny little loophole in the word pedestrian. And we ended up making love in the parking lot. <laughs> we did. Here's how it goes in Baltimore. I pulled up behind a woman at a red light. And then I fucked her in the parking lot. Do you see? <laughs> it's a subtle change, guys. 
It's very subtle, like, you, it's the intricacy, you know what I mean? This fellow was confused. When I said pedestrian, he's like, what the fuck does that mean? So you skip over that whole section. They just want to know who you're sleeping with in the parking lot. That's it. You got to play the demographic. That's what I mean. Some of you aspiring comedians, you got to get to know the demographic, you know what I mean? You can't go into Bethesda, Maryland and say that you pulled up behind a woman at a red light. You got to be like my driver pulled up behind a woman at a red light, you know what I mean? You know, if I'm going to go out and speak to the kitchen staff out here in the Stamp Union lunching area, whatever it is, I got to be like, estaba detrás de la mujer la luz roja. Or they're not going to have any idea. That's a Spanish-speaking joke, math fuckers. That was a funny <laughs> reference about people that work right there. Thank you, Mr. Colon. Appreciate that. Okay. God damn it. That was a lot of work for nothing right there at the end. How we doing okay? Okay. Redskins. Any Redskins fans in here? Mostly Ravens, right? Ravens moment? Okay. How about that? But football fans in general, right? All right. This is about politics. Who thinks that the Redskins should change their name out of sensitivity for the Native Americans? By round of applause. A few of you. And who thinks under protection of the Constitution that that name should stay the same? <laughs> Go ahead, white guy scratching your chin. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. It's okay. It's okay. You'd be right. You know why you're right? Because there's not enough of them left for us to care about their feelings. Am I right, white people? White power! White power! White power! <laughs> it's really weird chanting that by yourself, guys. Like I said, I'm from Fredericksburg. On that part, everybody joins in. We have a big old party. No, I'm teasing. I, uh, I actually, actually, are there any Native Americans in here, by the way? I should ask. Native Americans? One? What's up, Chief? If, um, Matt, I pretended that there was a Native American back there. There's not. <laughs> Theater degree from George Mason University. You're like, holy shit, there's a Native American back there. There's not, but these eyes said, yes, there is. Okay, there's not, there's not. But there are Indians here. Are you guys from India, Pakistan, something like that, India? Good, we're gonna get to you and offend the fuck out of you. Hold on a second. Remember, it's a comedy show, okay? It's a comedy show, all right? So, uh, so I say change it, actually. I'm, uh, I'm of the mind that we should, because honestly, there's a group of people that's really offended by that term, so I say change it, you know? Because I don't know, I'm not Native American, I don't know how offensive that term is. Those of us that are not in a group, like a, generally it's a minority, we don't get to say what words are offensive to our group, right? It's always that specific group that gets to say so, you know? So I did a little research, like, for example, I don't know, is it bad? In Native American, is it, is it like the F word to the gays, or the N word to the blacks? You know, I don't use those words when those people are around, and I don't want to offend Native Americans either. Not that I go hanging out with a lot of Native Americans, you know, because I don't like to gamble, but if I did, I wouldn't just be out there frivolously using this word, right? But some of us are guilty of this. Here's a real life example. The word Redskins, when we were coming up, didn't mean anything other than a football team. I don't think anybody that even applauded when they said change the name knew when you were a kid that it was offensive to a group of people. Is that a fair assumption? We grew up thinking it was just a team, cool thing, wear the shirt, wear the hat, whatever it is, right? But then we learned at some point or another that perhaps there's a percentage of people that believe that it's offensive, so we took it out of uh, our thought of thinking that it's nothing, right? My mom, and this is going to sound so ignorant, I think, my mom, when we were uh, kids, used to call all of us kids, my brothers and my sister, jungle bunnies. That's an offensive term, right? I, to this day, don't think that it is because I wasn't raised thinking that it was. My mom didn't know. A little white lady from Illinois had no fucking idea. Apparently, it's a, it's, a, it's a slur, right? Well known, right? She had no idea. I remember very clearly my mom walking up to playgrounds, and we actually used to live in Baltimore County, and being like, all right, you little jungle bunnies, let's get in the station wagon. And I can only imagine what the other kids' parents were thinking, you know? But then, unlike a lot of people that still support the name Redskin, she heard that it was offensive and removed it from her vocabulary. That's the mistake that society is making, you see. It's not that we didn't know at first. That's ignorance. We accept that. That's mistake one, not your fault. Once you learn about it and you say, fuck you, we're still using it, then you're an asshole. Right? Okay. So a lot of my friends will say, dude, uh, there's other Native American associated names that that are out there. Native Americans aren't barking about that. Nobody's barking about that. And it's true. Why is that? What are the names? The Braves, the Seminoles, the Blackhawks, the Chiefs, right? Nobody's barking about it. Why? Because it's accurate. It's accurate, you guys. And the Native Americans don't mind it as long as there's a pride situation involved, right? The only other sports team that gets any guff for anything is the Cleveland Indians, right? Why is that? 
because of that offensive logo. It's that red-faced chief, Chief Wahoo, right? The word Indians itself is not offensive. It's misplaced when it comes to Native Americans. There is a place called India. But the Native Americans, it was misplaced, right? Most of us know Christopher Cl guy from Baltimore. Christopher Columbus came over here 500 years ago, thought he was in India, right? So he called everybody Indians, and then here we are 500 years later, we're still too ignorant to completely change. They have different textbooks in Baltimore, guys. Okay, so it's this gray area. We don't know how to treat it. All right. <laughs> I appreciate you, uh, appreciate you laughing along there, Mr. Baltimore. You're doing okay, stop itching your crotch. Um, <laughs> But the name is misplaced, right? But if the Cleveland Indians were to change their motif, they don't have to change their name, just change their motif from being in association with Native Americans to being in association with India, they could change their mascot from a red-faced chief to a brown-skinned telemarketer, and then we're accurate again, right? They could have a whole stadium full of curried hot dogs and curried popcorn, and they could have a deli in there who spell it D-E-H-L-I. They could have a sportscaster named Harry Curry, and he'd be like, beautiful day for baseball, right? You could have baseball hats that advertise your website. It'd be Indians.com, just like that. And you could have bobblehead day. You know, most bobbleheads go all around, but Indian bobbleheads only go like this. That's it. <laughs> you guys know how drunk you can get at a Cleveland Indians game? Shit, it's not like you're not going to get a cab home, for Christ's sakes, right? So what I've done is I've redesigned the Cleveland Indians logo. <laughs> to be respectful of a beautiful nation full of intelligent people, the most populous nation in the world, why should they not have a market share in the American sporting world? That's what this t-shirt's about. <laughs> He's got a headset on. Little Indian Peninsula down there. I think it's much more accurate. I don't accept student funding or whatever your little cards are, but I sell them. But I could understand why at a college it would be an inappropriate person purchase. So, but it's on my website, so we can we can do that. We can do that. Sit tight. I got I got to do the masturbation joke, or they're gonna boo. Okay. All right. So you made it through most of the the good stuff. You guys okay back there? Good. Good, because it's, uh, it's satire. That's, that's what it is. Okay, cool. Can I get it right home? Listen. <laughs> All right. No, one of you is married, right? Is, only one, is there only one married person you're married to? Oh, 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 you're sprouting up all over the place now. Oh, okay. Who's been married the longest? Two years here. Anybody longer than that? How many? Five years. Congratulations. Your name, sir? Ben. ben. Welcome to the show, Ben. Anybody dating? You're math students. Who else? You got you two right there? Super cute. How long you been dating? Mm, 5.143 years. We're going to celebrate there. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, I, I missed what you said, actually. I was too busy being like, how do I make fun of this fucking math student? <laughs> what? Five years. Five years. Very good. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> good. Congratulations on that. That's a, that's a good stretch. Wow. All th so uh, how long was grad school? Or are you in it? You're still in it. Okay. Uh, Okay, so you've met another guy. That's great. Your name, sir? Adam. 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 Ben. Ben. Adam. I'm not trying to leave out the ladies, but this is about the guys, okay? Adam. Adam, I think what most of us know is that stereotypically speaking, uh, when you get married, your sex life dips off a little bit. I think most people know that, right? Maybe you're busy. Maybe you have kids, whatever the hell it is, right? But what you don't know, Adam, is that masturbation changes quite a bit, too. Where are my married people at? Okay. Now, Adam, I'm not going to get super personal with you. Don't get uncomfortable. <laughs> but when you masturbate, <laughs> everybody get a good look at Adam. Let's all, <laughs> let's get a visual. Don't touch his head. Don't, t don't stroke him right now. That's inappropriate, young lady. <laughs> inappropriate. Okay. But when Adam, when you masturbate, okay. You can't just come out of the bathroom or the study hall or wherever you are and tell her that you <laughs> took care of it, right? She's going to want to know who you were thinking about and why you didn't wait for her. And then you got to lie and be like, oh, it was you. But it's not it's five years. It's not her. It could be anybody. It could be anybody in the world. The Asian fetish maybe right here. It could, could happen. 
Could happen. Talkative chick here? Maybe. Not her. That's what's what I know. That's what I know. Okay. But I've been married for 10 years. My man Ben in the back for five. We masturbate now. It's like we're helping out around the house. Am I right? Ben, don't you fucking bail out on me. It's true, man. If I'm, my wife will encourage me. Right? If I'm in the restroom for a certain period of time, she'll knock on the door and be like, you better be jerking off in there. The season premiere of Castle's on tonight, and I don't want you trying to fuck me in the middle of the show. And I'm like, Jesus. She's putting naked pictures of her sister under the door, you know? <laughs> she could walk in on me, guys, like mid-business. Walk right in on me, and she'd be like, oh, my God. Thank you for taking care of that. You are so sweet. You are so, look at you with your little pecker in your hand. You get that. You are nasty. Get it. Get it. And I'm like, oh, yeah? You want to get in on this? And she's like, shh. That's for you. I'm going to go pick up dog shit out of the yard. <laughs> I'm like, so now that I know I'm helping her out, I try to get to it as frequently as I possibly can because, to be honest with you guys, I really feel like I'm taking a load off her chest. Thank you guys, you're sweet. He walked away like he said the most profound shit at the end of the day. One more time for me and Monster Fabi, everybody. 